Tonight on Caps 13, this week is Pittsburgh State University's homecoming week. We'll have the highlights of this week's events. The town of Cato hosted Cato Days, a look at the history in town coming up. Pitt State's Indian Student Association is making their preparations for Diwali. We'll have the story. It's homecoming on campus and the festivities are just getting started. Thank you for tuning in to Caps 13 News. I'm Lily Weir. With the homecoming game this Saturday, Pittsburgh State looks to live in the campus with events spread out across the week. Reporter Drake Miller has the story. On Monday, the homecoming committee hosted a kickoff event for students to attend and have some fun. We basically just gather all of the stuff from last year and come up with ways to improve it and make it better and a little bit more of our own. So that's what we did here today. We got our first ever rage room over there. So anybody's interested in getting a little bit of anger out, they can go on over there. Students had the chance to vote for candidates, build their own gorillas, and break some plates to help them get in the spirit of kicking off this week. It's a good way to get involved, not only just with the organization that you're representing, if you are representing one, but it's also a way to get out and it's really good for freshmen since it's a good way for those freshmen to build connections and network a little bit. Candidates had stands open to help push for voting, handing out candy while also sending students around to help advertise for their campaigns. Student Jeremiah Cloyd was one of the helping hands. Homecoming week is just a different atmosphere than any other game day and so um, we're really looking forward to that. We're promoting um, the, uh, the kings and the queens of homecoming and basically just having fun out here for real. We're just having fun. Um, we got a lot of tables set up. You can stop by at the tables. Students can attend the game this Saturday at 2 o'clock where the Gorillas will host Sioux Falls, South Dakota and honor the royalty winners. For Caps 13 News, I'm Drake Miller. Voting for homecoming royalty closed today at noon and winners will be announced tonight at Yell Like Hell. Fraternities and sororities are celebrating homecoming with an annual event held in Gorilla Village on Wednesday. Raft races is, is a tradition held at the President's Lake each year of the week of homecoming. Greek Life representatives build their handmade boats and attempt to cross the lake twice. Student Noah Yaki was there to support his fraternity. I'm here to uh, support the chapter, uh, part of Sigma Chi. Uh, Mr. President's part of the homecoming royalty, so trying to get our points up and hopefully take the win for uh, homecoming. Pittsburgh State University comes alive with a spirited tradition that unites students, staff, and alumni in celebration like no other. Reporter Carter Adam has the story. Welcome to Yell Like Hell, the heart-pounding, high-spirited centerpiece of Pitt State's homecoming celebrations. In this new story, we dive into the heart of this tradition, seeing what makes it a cherished chapter in the Pitt State University story. We talked to Bailey Miller, the Assistant Director of Campus Activities, to have her give us a rundown over what Yell Like Hell is. Um, Yell Like Hell is a long-standing tradition where we encourage student organizations to come out and create a routine, a dance, a chant to some music, um, basically just hype up the student body, get them in involved and intrigued with what homecoming is, um, create that school spirit. When it comes to Yellow Kelly, it isn't just students who show up for the event. Different faculty will come out and show their support, and others like Rocky Restivo offer to help out with the event itself. It's, it's pretty interesting to me because half of Carney Smith Stadium is in for a non-football game which is kind of cool. So like, if you think about what draws people here, this is outside of football, this is one of the larger events at Pitt State. Uh, there's gonna be a couple thousand people there, which is, you know, makes me a little nervous as an MC. Many students sacrifice hours of their time practicing for this event. I spoke to Brooke Cunningham to get the student perspective of this event. It's like really hardcore. I mean, there's 6 a.m. practices, some organizations do five, seven days a week. I mean, it's just a huge time commitment, but. It's also a great way to get involved on Pitt State. Yellow Call brings together students, faculty, alumni, and friends in a shared celebration of pride and camaraderie. It's an event that reminds us all that the spirit of Pitt State is not only alive and well, but thriving and evolving. For Caps 13, I'm Carter Adam. The Pitt State Homecoming Committee is gearing up for this year's Yell Like Hell happening tonight. Every fall semester, Pitt State holds their annual Yell Like Hell. This is an event where students across campus get together and come up with a routine to perform in front of the entire school at Carney Smith Stadium. 
Yet like hell, only being a couple hours away, we decided to talk to one of the people that makes this possible, which is Pitt State's own homecoming committee chairman, Gracie Bott. We got a chance to see some of the preparation that goes into this event. So the theme is selected by the committee every year. It usually has something to do with what's going on in Pitt State. This year it had to do with Gus turning 100. Um, anybody who's in a registered student organization on campus can participate in Yell Like Hell. It's open to anybody. There's a small division. Um, there's also a large division. You can pair with other organizations. This year's Yell Like Hell is taking place tonight at 6 o'clock at Carney Smith Stadium. They'll be giving out popcorn and plastic megaphones to the audience in attendance. The homecoming committee's message to all is to be sure to yell like hell. Coming up, the construction on Quincy Street near the campus is still in progress. We talked to a local business located on the street. Out on the open road, wind in your hair, bugs in your teeth, and a car pulling out in front of you. Accidents like this happen every day. And you want to make sure you're protected. Hello and welcome back to CAPS 13. My name is Joe McGrath. Today I'll be giving you the current conditions on the weather. So let's take a look. Right now outside you can see spotty cloud conditions, the sun peeking through the clouds. That leaves us with a temperature of 79 degrees. As you can see outside, it's feeling around 82 degrees because that sun beating down through the clouds. The dew point this morning was around 45 degrees as well as the visibility with the sun in the clouds really stretches it to around 10 miles. The humidity with the showers in the morning it left us around 45% as well as the wind coming from the south. It's more of a breeze at about 15 miles per hour. So let's go ahead and plan our evening right now at 4 p.m. Obviously, 79 degrees, spotty clouds, like I just said. Moving on to later tonight, 7 p.m., yell like hell. Carney Smith Stadium should come down and support. Gorilla Pittsburgh State homecoming. It will be 78 degrees with spotty clouds. And moving on, later tonight at 11 p.m., we'll have spotty clouds across the night sky with a temperature about 67 degrees. So let's take a wider look in Kansas at the temperatures. It's Kansas City hitting around 76 degrees, moving further west and north, Concordia about 74 degrees, moving even further west, Hayes and Dodge City, each hitting around, around those mid, mid 70s to 80s, 81 degrees, 74 degrees. And as we move even further north to Colby and Goodland, we each see these cities hitting around 60 to 63 degrees. This is because through this weekend, a cold front's coming through, and that's when Pittsburgh will really feel it during those game days. We'll have light showers, dense clouds, light showers, and more. So let's get into the five-day forecast. Thursday, 79 degrees with spotty clouds. Our 91% precipitation chance came this morning, and moving into tonight, it'll be about a 66 degree low. So be be ready to have those windows open, turn off that AC because it'll get very comfortable. Friday at about 70 degrees, it'll be about 66% chance of precipitation. Moving into Friday night, we're gonna have a 47 degree low. That's when that cold front is going to start coming through and we'll feel it through Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. For Gorilla Game Day, the high is gonna be about 55 degrees. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and take a look at the game day temperatures. Gorilla Game Day, homecoming, the high will be about 50 degrees. Like I said before, there's going to be some precipitation. It'll feel like 44 degrees with that rain. The dew point that morning will be about 45 degrees again. And with the clouds, the rain, and the fog, the visibility will be around two miles. And with the rain, the humidity will be about 87%. The wind will be coming from the north at about nine miles per hour. But that's about it for the weather. My name is Joe McGrath. Thank you for turning into CAPS 13, and have a great day. Thanks, Joe. Construction on Quincy Street enters into its third stage as November is less than a week away. Construction started earlier this year and is projected to finish in September. 
While many remain upset about the construction delays, places like the Homestead find a way to make their situation work. We like to joke that it'll, it'll all be really pretty when it's done. But um, aside from that, it's, it's not affected it too much. We still have the same 15 to 20. Uh, what's really helpful for us though is like the way they've done the construction and the way like with the halfway point for where it's at, there are two, still two entrances on the far side of the church where students can drive to drive around and make their way to the homesteads. CAPS 13 reached out to City Hall's Director of Public Works, Matt Bacon. He says, quote, the team working still has a 79 day work period, weather permitting, end quote. The Overman Student Center partnered with the Department of Career Services to host the 2023 Education Fair. CAPS 13 reporter Joe McGrath has the story. This is the Pittsburgh State's Department of Career Services' second hosting of the Education Fair. This year's fair brought in a record amount of students to meet with future employers. Employers looked forward to meeting and connecting with students. Students were able to ask questions about the job market as well as make connections with school representatives. This helped many students gain confidence for their future as well as realize how important the Education Fair really is. Education Fair is incredibly important for these elementary education and secondary education students. Um, it just gives them an opportunity to network and talk to all the employers in there, um, all the school districts for those opportunities for when they graduate. The schools were welcome to discuss several topics with students such as job openings, the education market itself, and more. Nearly 50 schools advertise themselves in the ballrooms to all the students. We like to provide students with the opportunity um, on campus so they don't have to travel somewhere to meet with um, school representatives that have either job openings or are looking for education um, employees. Students were also able to learn what an employer looks for when hiring new staff. A lot of what teaching here at Pitt State, when you're going through your classes, you're learning a lot of like how to organize and manage a classroom. Um, but in talking with different educators and then uh, like school administrators, what they're really looking for is um, just like good learners because you're not going to come out of college knowing it all but you need to have like a, a growth mindset ready to learn. Over 100 students attended the fair making this year's education fair a great success. The Department of Career Services looks to host the education fair again in next October. From CAPS 13, I'm Joe McGrath. Pittsburgh State's theater program prepares once again for their student directed one acts. CAPS 13 reporter Matthew Parrott has the story. Pittsburgh State University begins preparations for five one-act plays, each directed by a different student. The shows feature a wide range of styles and themes, from comedies to dramas. Dr. Megan Westhoff describes how the class project is helpful for students of this class and freshmen interested in getting involved with theater. So it's good for our students, so our seniors, both in theater and communication education, have to take it as their capstone class, so it's good for them because they don't necessarily know what they're going to be doing in their future jobs. Some who will be teaching will be directing. Some who are doing theater might be directing. And it shows them collaboration skills. So working together, communicating, being able to facilitate a successful live performance. For students who are acting or working backstage, it's a great opportunity because they're beginners a lot of the time and this is an easy, low stakes way to get involved and it gives them stage experience. Jerry Middleton, one of the directors, decided to take a more serious and dramatic approach. He stated that he is excited to share his creative vision. My show is called The Killing by William Inge. Um, it's a 15-ish minute one act. Um, it is about a man named Mac and Huey. Mac brings home Huey from the bar and they have a jovial little chat. You can tell that Mac isn't really a people person. One act auditions have already taken place. However, the directors are still looking for extra members. You can direct any questions towards Dr. Westhoff or visit the theater program's website at pittstate.edu slash theater to learn more. For CAPS 13, I'm Matthew Parrott. Pittsburgh State's softball team shows their support for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We'll have the story coming up. Boy, sure is hot out here. I'm glad I wore some sunscreen. SPF 50. Oh, sunscreen. Over 97,000 people are diagnosed with melanoma every year. Think smart. Wear sunscreen.
Helping save the environment and on water slash power bills around the house can be very easy. According to the United States Environmental Protection Agency, over half of the water usage in a house is done in the bathroom. So a couple of ways you can fix that is to turn off the tap when you're brushing your teeth or shaving, taking showers instead of baths, and taking shorter showers. To save on power, some simple ways are to unplug stuff you are not using at the time, do laundry with only full loads, and wash with cold water instead of hot water. For more ways to conserve resources, go to epa.gov to find out more. The Pittsburgh State University softball team held their breast cancer awareness game Sunday against Northeastern Oklahoma A&M. October is National United States Breast Cancer Awareness Month. During this month, sports teams all over the country pair pink attire with fundraising efforts to support local charities and heighten breast cancer awareness. Pittsburgh State University softball head coach Jenny Fuller is happy with how the team's game went. Today was our last game of the fall and our pink out game that we did in honor of breast cancer awareness. And I am super happy with how our team played this fall. I think that we ended on a high note today and I'm looking forward to working with the team in the off season and keeping that motivation to get us into spring. Other PSU sports teams will also be holding various breast cancer awareness games throughout the month. Pittsburgh State University's soccer club hosts its final game of the season against Wichita State University. The team competes at the Gene Bicknell Sports Complex behind the main baseball field. After not being able to find a win in previous weeks, the club found success against Wichita and won 5 to nothing. Club member Ricardo Luna spoke to us about the team's season. The season was pretty tough. We faced very, very good teams. We had a lot of chances, definitely paid up all the practice. This was our last game. We had tons of, tons of chances. Hopefully and gladly we were able to win. You know, it was a tough season, long season. The weather sometimes is like super hot in here. That makes it harder, but in the end it was well worth it. The Pitt State Soccer Club will begin a new season in the spring, and Luna hopes that, that new students will get involved. Interested students can find more information on Gorilla Engage. Cato Days kicked off over the weekend. Looking into the history of an early southeast Kansas town, reporter Jordan Keyes has the story. Cato is a ghost town straddling the Crawford Bourbon County line. It came to life over the weekend with the annual Cato Days, dedicated to teaching children and area residents about life on the frontier. President Catherine Spigarelli of the Cato Historical Preservation Association says the event was many years in the making. Cato Days started back in probably the 1980s by a man named John Sperling, who was a resident of Cato and he started what he called the Cato Tours. And he would gather people here at the school and take them on wagon rides around the country and stop at different locations and tell them stories. Member Anna Swank helped recreate the 1869 classroom for visitors, as well as the several hundred fourth and fifth graders from area schools on Cato Kids Day. On the kids' day, we had 10 rotations, and so we had a few other things. We had a covered wagon, we had soldiers, we had horses and things that the kids could come see. It's an annual event. Um, it's all volunteer-based. Mm -hmm. um, most of us are just have a love of history, have a love of the area. Many of us are um, descendants of the original settlers. Um, we try to cover the whole gamut of things from um, what it was like to live here in the 1800s, what it was like to go to school in a one-room schoolhouse. With events like Cato Days, Crawford County gets a chance to take a few steps back in history. For Caps 13, I'm Jordan Keyes. Time is running out to apply to be a Pitt Cares leader. We'll take a look at what Pitt Cares leaders do next. Every day you wake up, get ready, eat, go to school, exercise, eat, do homework, and sleep. Now add your phone into this routine. The average American spends five to seven hours a day on their phone. Recognizing when you may be addicted to your phone can help you get your time back. So put your phone down. Phones can never replace real connections. So put your phone down. Being addicted to your phone is real. So put your phone down. Learn more at addictions.com slash cell phone addiction. Hi, my name is Jorge Leon, and I'm the Learning and Outreach Librarian at Axe Library. In this library, we have four floors open to students, 
with a variety of services and spaces. Everything from first come first serve rooms to those that you can check out online. Uh, books and access services are all on the second and third floor. Materials can be checked out on first and access to partners such as the Writing Center and Student Success on the first level. Uh, we welcome and hope to see you here. Thank you. Pittsburgh State University's Gorilla Pantry has moved its location to the Bryant Student Health Center. I had a chance to take a look at what the pantry has to offer. At the start of the 2023 fall semester, Pittsburgh State University partnered with the Community Health Center of Southeast Kansas. The Gorilla Pantry, which was previously located at the Overman Student Center, has been moved to the Health Center as a result of the recent partnership. CHC Wellness Education and Advocacy Services Coordinator Taylor Panchner feels the moving of the pantry will have positive effects on students. With moving it to the Health Center, we were able to offer a little bit more coverage in extended hours. Also because Community Health Center of Southeast Kansas has food pantries across our other locations we're able to receive from the Kansas Food Bank. That was really the biggest reason on why we moved it was just to be able to sustain food coming in and offer a little bit more extended hours and kind of let campus activities get back to their normal operations. A 2023 study found that more than 4 million college students in the United States do not feel they have enough to eat. Pittsburgh State University undergraduate student Kendall Forbes feels the Gorilla Pantry is exceptional at helping with student wellness needs. Um, I do go to the pantry. I really like it because I'm a student athlete and it's easy to just stop in there and grab quick and easy meals. Students can visit the Gorilla Pantry between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday to Friday. The pantry is accessible to all students with their PSU IDs. The Overman Student Center Mini Theater is currently out of use because of the equipment being out of date. The Mini Theater was created in the early 90s. There was an old projector and four speakers. Back then, the Student Activities Council would play movies about every two weeks. After a few years, the equipment was updated to include high-definition defini projector, updated speakers, subwoofer, Blu-ray DVD player, and receiver. However, this equipment was only up to date for so long. I went down there to test the equipment out and both the projector and the receiver no longer work. And so the big question is, does the university via the student center want to make an investment of probably $10,000 to upgrade everything? The cost of the update would include the equipment and a hiring company to install it. Due to the room's shape, it would be difficult to find another use if the student center decides not to upgrade the theater. Pitt State students had the opportunity to work as Pitt Cares leaders next summer. CAPS 13 reporter Dominic Santiago has the story. Pitt Cares is an annual program for fall incoming freshmen and transfer students to learn about Pittsburgh State University. Students are able to meet with other students and have a chance to learn about the different programs at Pitt State. The application for the Pitt Cares leader position was recently opened and I had a chance to speak with the Director of First Year Programs, Ashley Waddell, about what it means to be a Pitt Cares leader. They get to spend their summer welcoming new gorillas, getting to know them, kind of teaching them what it means to be a student here at Pitt State. Plus they form really strong bonds as a team with other Pitt State students and get to know faculty and staff. Um, they get paid, which is helpful. Waddell emphasized some of the reasons students decide to become a Pitt Cares leader beyond the pay. She pointed to the leadership opportunities as a key feature of the position. Pitt Cares coordinator, Rayleigh Bishop, talked about her previous experience as a Pitt Cares leader. I would say it's just a lot of fun to be around like other people who want to share things that they enjoy. Like I like hearing about all the things that like the other Cares leaders enjoyed and like their favorite thing about campus and like just hearing about things that I wouldn't have thought about on campus. Pitt Cares takes place in the month of June, and students that are hired as Cares leaders will participate in all of the sessions throughout the month. Additionally, Pitt Cares leaders will be enrolled in a one credit hour class in the spring semester. The Pitt Cares leader application closes on October 29th. More information about the position can be found in the new section on Gorilla Engage. For CAPS 13, I'm Dominic Santiago. Coming up this weekend is a celebration of three alumni from Pitt State. Friday evening, the university will be giving an award to three outstanding alumni at the Wilkinson Center. 
Director Danielle Driscoll of Alumni Constituent Relations name the, uh, names the honorees. The Dr. Kenneth Kate Bateman Outstanding Alumni Award is honored to alumni during homecoming every year. And uh, this year we are honoring Kelly Burgess, Dr. David Baker, and Samantha Pinkle Jefferson with the award. So they will be here on campus for three days of celebration and we will honor them tomorrow during, on Friday, during a reception at the Wilkinson Alumni Center at 3.30. The Pitt State Indian Student Association is celebrating Diwali. We'll have a look into the event after the break. Whoa, let's pause right there. Good job on going out and taking a hike, but do you know if that tree is safe to rest on? The main problem with this image here is this vine. How can you tell if it's poison ivy? Poison ivy is number one on our list of plants to avoid because it contains a resin that can induce an unpleasant skin rash if you touch it. Poison ivy you see here in Kansas will grow on a vine climbing up trees. The best way to tell if a plant is poison ivy is if it has three leaves. Remember the saying, leaves of three, let it be. If you come into contact with poison ivy, the best way to avoid symptoms is to wash with soap and water thoroughly. If you contract a rash, rubbing calamine lotion on the area is effective. This has been Know Your Nature. Diwali is the biggest festival celebrated in Indian culture. It often lasts for a whole month, but the Pitt State Indian Student Association is celebrating it for one night on campus. CAPS 13 reporty, reporter Azaria Pishni has the story. Diwali is an Indian festival celebrating the spreading of light from within ourselves. The Indian Student Association will be holding its own smaller version of the festival. The event is personally meaningful to many Indian transfer students, including club president Srikar Nagaradipali and event coordinator Priya Yadav. For me, it is a big event. Like, actually, we all Indian students uh, came a long way here to U.S. and we definitely miss our family and culture. So this is one of the best way that we could celebrate and also be close to our family even if we are far from our family because all the friends we see here are a family for us. You can feel that it's a place of festival. When you come to India for Diwali, you can see the firecrackers everywhere. Like not just in, on the day of Diwali, but you can see the previous year, previous day after the Diwali. You can see that, you can feel that, yeah, there is something going on in these places. Yadav performed two dances at last year's Diwali festival and will be performing two dances this year as well. She's been practicing for months and is excited to share her culture with others. I love that people around here also, they like to know about your culture. They were interested in everything. They liked our food, they liked our performance. So it was pretty exciting and nice for us. It was a huge and I, will, I can say that it was a nice and best experience I could ever have. Diwali is open to anyone who wants to experience Indian culture. Come join us and see how colorful it will be. For CAPS 13, I'm Azaria Pishni. Last year, Diwali was held in the Student Center, and this year it has grown to fit the Bicknell. They will begin performances in Indian food, followed by fireworks in the parking lot on October 27th at 3 p.m. And that's all the time we have for you tonight. Thank you for joining us. My name is Lily Weir, and we'll see you next time.